So when I throw one and he brings it back and I stroke him and I want him to let go, I produce a second one exactly the same. So we let's go with the first one to go and retrieve the second one. But what I'm also going to do, once he understands to bring things to me, once he understands that idea, I'm going to teach him, again just by using my emotions, the word which means drop it. And all this is done starting off just by using emotions. Um, we videoed this as well with the little dog playing with the toy. We actually have the video. Um, so I think it's been interpreted because I was talking and then someone was explaining what I was doing. So just watch what happens. It just takes a few minutes as long as the dog stops trying to self-corrects because if the puppy bites my fingers I'll go mm. if the puppy loves you it will stop doing that that's how they learn facial expression but of course that depends on me being able to get the dog to play with the toy and that takes a little bit of time uh, with some breeds it might take me a whole day to teach it to play with toys and retrieve uh, with adult dogs it might take me longer than it seemed than you've seen there to get the dog to play with toys and retrieve. So it depends on the owner 
playing with a dog with toys, which I encourage every owner in the world to do. So I'm going to give you a little secret. In case you haven't heard, all of the best detection dogs working at airports and stations around the world, all of them, are trained using toys. None of them are trained using food. So 我的手指头放在玩具上面所以他如果去咬那个玩具的时候他会咬到我的手那很自然我脸上会有不高兴的表情所以他看懂我的表情他就会知道什么可以做什么不能做当然如果是不同品种的狗或者是说如果是成犬
用食物呢，其实我还是要教他一样东西，要他看的是我的表情。如果说我今天是在微笑的话，他可以吃，就表示我在微笑的时候，他要做的这个动作，我都是同意的。But if I stop smiling, it means it doesn't matter what you try, you aren't going to get any food. 但是如果我不笑了，那就不管说这个狗是怎么做哈，我都不能给它吃，我不愿意让它吃这个东西。And you can see how quickly the dog learned that. If it looks in my face and I'm smiling, it means yes, you can take it. 你们会发现小狗很快就学会了这个指令。它看我的脸，如果我在微笑，它知道它可以吃东西。如果我没有，就不行。If you look at my face and I'm not smiling, it means whatever you do, you can't have it. 看我的脸哈，如果我没有笑的话呢，不管怎样，你就是不能够拿到我手上的东西。Once achieved using a toy. Exactly the same thing using food. So we, 不管是用玩具或者是用食物，我们达成的目的是一样的。So what I'm trying to teach the dog to do is constantly keep looking at me all the time to see if what it's doing is right or what it's doing is wrong. So I want to teach my dog the method to say to look at me. He has to pay attention to the dog's face. He will know what is allowed and what is not allowed. I'm teaching it to understand my emotions. 我需要教会它了解我的情绪。So I have the ability to say to my dog at a distance, "Sit," and then I smile, and the dog wags his tail and says, "That's what he wanted." 所以即使我今天让跟我的狗离开一段距离，但是它看我的表情。然后他就知道说，我要他坐下，而且他乖乖坐下的时候，他跟我摇摇尾巴，这样我知道他他是很乖、很听话的一只狗。It gives me total control when I then go on to train the dog to do different behaviors or different commands. I already have the ability to communicate. 这样建立了我和他之间沟通的管道，那我对他的控制也就更强了。所以我会知，呃，我就将来呢要给他别的指令，训练他听别的指令的时候都可以做得到。The other thing that's important with your dog is that you control the training and direct it in such a way that you can control the instincts of your individual dog. 另外呢，就是我们在呃训练的时候啊，要去控制它，所以甚至可以控制到这个狗的本性。For example, if I have a young border collie before it reaches the age of twelve weeks. I must have trained it to stay while I throw something. So, 比如说我今天呢有一只呃边境牧羊犬的幼犬，它在十二周以前哈，我就要教会它说我今天丢一个东西让它去捡回来。With my Doberman, the guarding breed, I must train it to bark and be quiet when I tell it before it's twelve weeks. 如果我要养的是护卫犬，像杜宾的话呢，在他十二周之前，我就要教会他说，他呃，他觉得有陌生人来的时候，他要叫。可是我的表情告诉他要停，他马上就会停止。Because if I can control the barking that the dog does, it will never be a problem. It's going to bark later in life, but I want to be in control of it. 因为像这样的狗啊，它一定是会叫的。但是只要我能够控制它什么时候可以叫，什么时候不能叫的话，这就不会是一个问题。My border collie will want to chase for all of its life, so all I'm doing is teaching it control over that instinct. 像边境牧羊犬这样的狗，它的本性本来就是会去追逐啊路上的东西，所以呢，它一定会这样做。可是我要我要能够做到的就是我可以控制它，控制它什么时候能够追，什么时候不能追。Also, in teaching it this type of self-control, we help the dog to handle any frustrations it might have later in life. 而且我们通过这个方式教会狗狗去自我控制它的行为的话，在以后哦，它如果遇到一些它想要做不能做的事情，然后它会觉得很沮丧的时候，它自己也能够控制。So I want you to think: How could I train a dog to stay when I throw something? 所以，如果我今天要训练狗，说我丢一个东西，然后但是我要它停住不动，这也是可以训练的。Again, it's one of these exercises 
it is incredibly simple and takes no more than three or four minutes to put the idea in the dog's head. 一样还是一个很简单的方法，而且大概只要三四分钟就可以让狗了解我们的指令。And we refer to this as teaching the dog a pattern of behavior. 其实我们在教的都是要教会它一个行为模式。I'll see if I can explain what we mean by a pattern of behavior. 来跟大家说明一下什么叫行为模式。I'll see if I can give you a pattern of behavior. You see the arrow on the exit sign. What color is that? 大家看一下啊，那边有一个指标，那个箭号的颜色是什么颜色呢 ？Shout it out. How about this screen? What color is that? 那屏幕呢 ？How about the top on this bottle? What color is that? Quickly. 瓶盖也是。Quickly, what do cows drink? They actually drink water. They produce milk. By getting you to repeat and imagine the color white, when I then ask you a question, what do cows drink, you're thinking of something white, which is why so many of you responded by saying milk, they actually drink water. 因为我让大家不断的重复想象那个白色，所以我问你们说牛会喝什么的时候，你们就会说牛奶，可是其实他们喝的是水。That's a simple pattern of behavior, and training aims to produce that in the dog, a simple, repeatable pattern that they offer of their behavior. So, with my own dogs, if I took this out, threw it, and said fetch, even without thinking, they would run out, pick it up, and bring it back. 所以我们希望建立的就是一种行为模式。那透过重复的训练啊，就是你给他简单的指令，通过重复的训练，这是可以达成的。所以我训练成功的话呢，我丢一个东西，那个狗狗不用想就会去把它捡回来。But the pattern is so strong. If I then pick this up and throw it and ask the dog to fetch it, they pick it up and bring it back. 其实那个行为模式哈，已经建立的成为一个很强烈的印象。如果我今天随便丢一个东西，它就是会去把它咬咬了捡回来。And the pattern is so strong. If I pick this chair up and throw it and say fetch, my dog wouldn't bring it back, but it would go and try. 当他建立了这个模式以后，如果我今天把这个椅子丢到旁边，然后呃，要他去捡的话，当然他太重，他咬不回来，可是他会跑到椅子那边去找到那个椅子。Another pattern of behavior.、Um, if you all had dogs in here with you, and I did this, I, I did this. 好，假。另外一个行为模式就是，假设你们现在身边都有狗，然后我在这边敲桌子。Even though they're not in your house and no one has knocked on your door, they would still bark. 虽然他不是在你的家里面哦，但是他听到我敲桌子的话，那些狗都会开始叫。So that's what we call a repeatable pattern of behavior. We use it in training, but more often we use it to solve problems that dogs have. 这就是我们说的可以重复的行为模式。那我们会在训练当中用这种行为模式来训练他们，而且更重要的是，透过行为模式的建立，可以解决行为问题。So with my young dog, I have to teach it about myself and my emotions, so we have a strong bond. I've got to find things it enjoys doing and offer it things that are enjoyable with me. I've got to get it to play with me because that's how I'm going to educate and train it. I have to feed it, and I can use some food to strengthen the training that I'm doing. So, I today, if I have a young dog, and I have to teach it to understand my emotions, and I have to play with it, and I have to feed it, and I have to use some food to strengthen the training that I'm doing. So, I today, if I have a young dog, and I have to teach it to understand my emotions, and I have to play with it, and I have to feed it, and I have to use some food to strengthen the training that I'm doing. So, I today, if I have a young dog, and I have to teach it to understand my emotions, and I have to play with it, and I have to use some food to strengthen the training that I'm doing. 
have to just apologise to my interpreter. When I get excited, I start to speak very fast. <laughs> 所以他在讲课的时候，如果跟人家有些分享说我讲太快，我会尽量跟上。But in addition to teaching my puppy about myself, I need to teach it about people who live in my community, my friends, family, neighbors, and other people. 我们除了教导狗狗以外呢，其实也要教人，要教我的朋友、我们社区里面其他的居民。And if you end up with a dog that likes you. And your close family, but is frightened, worried, or doesn't like other people, that has nothing to do with your dog at all. It's the owner of the dog that has created the problem. So imagine I have a young puppy. A young dog, and it looks up to me for everything in life. It looks to me for guidance. We have a close relationship. I'm asking you to imagine that. So the puppy is learning about life by observing my behavior in different situations. If you have a very young dog and you don't want it to steal food from this table, there's a very simple way of doing it. Puppy at the moment is not big enough to jump on the table and get the food for itself, but it knows there's food there because it can smell it. And this puppy loves me and understands a lot about my emotions. So it just takes a few times when the puppy's in the room with me and there's food on the table, watch how I approach the table. Within two or three days, when I walk near that table, the puppy will go, don't touch it, don't touch it. <laughs> But if I approach the table when there's food on it with a smile, that's good to eat. The puppy will say, when I get big enough, I'll eat it as well. How about when I greet people? This is a big problem around the world, where dogs start to love the people they live with, but they don't like other people. So it's a big problem. And again, it's down to how I greet people. So just imagine that I live in a house with my family. The puppy is looking to me to learn everything about life. And one of our family members, my wife Judy, has been out of the house for a little while and she comes back in. My puppy's with me. Watch what the puppy sees in how I greet her. Judy, this is my wife Judy. Judy. Thank you. <laughs> So the pop is with me and he sees that greeting, how affectionate, how we looked into one another's eyes and we made contact. 
Now with the same puppy. The same puppy. Someone comes to the house that I don't know very well. And the puppy's with me, and I'm going to greet them. 同样，同样一只狗哦。今天如果有另外一个人来到我家，这个人我跟他没有那么熟，然后他会看到我跟这个人的互动。If you wonder why your puppy treats some people differently from others, you've just seen the answer. 所以你如果在想说为什么我家的狗对待每一个人的态度不一样，答案就在这里了。You see how when we approach, we make brief contact and then back it away. 我们跟不熟的人哦，就稍微碰一下，然后就往后退了。I think your puppy would do the same. So the lesson is, next time you get a young dog, if you wanted to be friendly to everyone in the community, hug and kiss everyone you meet. <laughs> and then your dog won't learn that there's a difference. 如果这样的话呢，你的狗就会发现说所有的人，他就会以为所有的人都一样，他就不会去辨别其他的人。Or whenever your loved one comes in, shake them by the hand。或者是你也可以故意就是在你喜喜爱的家人回家的时候，你故意很冷淡的去跟他握握手，那你看狗会学到什么？So the advice with the young dog that's being socialized, if it starts to show a little bit of fear of someone that it doesn't know. If it's safe to do so, if you leave the puppy free and go and give them a big hug, you'll find your puppy won't be frightened of them anymore. And there's two reasons behind that. One is it's seen you being very friendly, but the second, you've now made that person smell the same as you. You've transferred a lot of your scent onto them, which makes them much less worrying. 对于这个陌生的朋友不会那么害怕的，有两个理由。第一个就是你对这个朋友展现出非常友善，愿意接纳他的态度；第二个呢，就是因为你拥抱你的朋友以后啊，你你会把气味转移到他身上，所以呢，
而且如果是这样子做的话，重复很多次，当然也会变成一个行为模式。他去看这个陌生人的时候，他根本不是看他的脸，他只看他的手。那以后狗遇到陌生人的时候，就是去看他手上有没有食物而已。So what you end up with in a very short space of time is a puppy that will start approaching people, sniffing their hands if they don't have food. <笑>所以我们最后看到的结果就是呢，狗狗看到陌生人的时候，它一开始会先靠近它，但是它靠近它是为了去闻闻看它的手，如果手里面没有食物的话，马上就开始叫。I'd much rather the puppy stood back here and said I'm worried instead of standing right in front of him barking. 如果它看到陌生人一定会叫的话，我们当然希望啊，宁愿它是站在一定的距离在这里叫，而不要很接近这个陌生人在它面前叫。So using food to overcome fear will not work. So we many times think that using food can solve the fear of the dog's fear. But in fact, it's not true. But being a great role model for the way that your dog behaves is really important. But being a great role model for the way that your dog behaves will always work. The most effective way is to give him a model to follow, a model to learn from, a model to learn from, a model to learn from. Okay, um, we've just gone over by, by a few minutes. Um, I can only work right the way through, but I'm sure some of you want something to eat. Um, so we're going to take a break. I think we'll probably resume somewhere around, is it around 2.30? Yeah. What time is it now? 12, oh, sorry, 1, 1.30. 1.30. <laughs> I'm still suffering from jet lag. <laughs> so um, we're going to resume at, uh, around 1.30. But I don't want you um, to leave here um, without thinking about something. Um, and what I'm going to ask you to think about during the little break is a dog's behaviour, the way it behaves. And I want you to think about just a different concept, a different way of looking at dog behaviour. If someone said to you, I'm going to do a TV programme where I want to do a documentary, The documentary is, I want you, as a trainer, to get a young dog, and we want to document its life with you, and by the time it gets to eight months of age, we want to film it when you go out tearing your house to pieces. How would you do it? I want you to think about that. Oh,那我们现在应该要要午餐休息了，大概一点半的时候我们再回来。但是我希望大家在休息的时候还是要思考，我我们可以用不同的观点再来看这个呃狗的行为。所以我现在希望你们去假设哈，今天有一个电视台